Hey guys and girls, this is part two of episode six of the Land Cruiser project build, and I'm gonna be rebuilding manual locking hubs and inspecting solid rear axles. This clutch assembly has not been put together correctly, and that's resulted in the clutch becoming stuck in the freewheel hub body, as well as minor damage to its components. This locking hub appears to be functioning correctly until I move from the locked to the free position, only to discover the back of the control handle has been completely destroyed and the rest of the components are loose inside the hub body. I was unable to select four wheel drive or four x four in the 75 series ute and troop carrier until these manual locking hub issues were addressed. After being rebuilt, this is what a functioning clutch assembly looks like in the free and locked positions. ASIN is an original equipment manufacturer for the Toyota Land Cruiser, and this is a brand new locking hub. First I remove the hub cover and clutch assembly, and then disassemble the components. Starting with the clutch, you can see a groove around the inside and an opening between the splines. Insert your small spring into the groove, then line up the end of it with the last spline before the gap. The other end of the small spring has a bend. This must be located against one of the larger inside tabs of the pawl, with one of the smaller outside tabs locked in between the splines on the outside of the clutch. You can see the pawl is in position when it lines up with the profile of the clutch splines. Then with the bent end of the spring against the larger inner tab, you need to tension it by positioning the spring over the two smaller inside tabs of the pawl. Starting near the end of the spring, I lift over the first tab from above, then over the second tab from below using this flat blade screwdriver. With the spring located inside the pawl, the clutch assembly is now secured together. The larger spring has an end with a smaller opening, and this is secured over the top of the clutch assembly. The back of the control handle has these checkouts, and they are to accept the larger tabs on the inside of the pawl. Now I push the clutch assembly through the checkout in the back of the control handle and rotate anti-clockwise slightly, leaving it in the locked position. Next I select the free position and wind the clutch assembly anti-clockwise until it's locked against the back of the control handle. Then I position the gasket against the back of the hub cover. The smaller tabs on the outside of the pole now dictate how the free wheel hub assembly is installed into the hub body. The larger internal openings will accept the splines on either side of the tabs. Next I secure the hub cover into the hub body and check that it functions correctly. Now I select the lock position with the control handle, expanding the clutch assembly and locking the hub onto the splines at the end of the axle shaft. Always remove and install the hub cover with the free position selected and the clutch assembly compressed. While I had the axles removed, it was a good time to check the splines for damage as well as behind the flange where bearing wear can occur on the shaft. Before reinstalling, I use this razor blade to scrape off the old gasket on the back of the axle flange. I finished off using a wire brush and some carburetor cleaner to prepare the surface for the new gasket. The free wheel hub cover is secured with small bolts which can be broken with relatively little force. It is crucial when using impact tools not to over tighten them. That's a wrap for episode 6. If you have any questions leave a comment. Like, subscribe, I'll catch you later.